Welcome to the Rolled Standard. I am your first host and best host, coolest host, your best friend, Nate. I'm uh, arguably the, the better or cooler <laughs> second or th- first or third host, Christopher. I'm neither of those. I'm just Aaron. He's humble. He's realistic. Too he's humble. Either... I don't trust it. No, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Be... It's fake. Actually, I, I, I trust that one. Because oh, we fuck. know that he is just Aaron. Yeah, that's And what, he's that's... honestly as cool as we were making ourselves sound and aren't. God damn it. That's right, yo. God damn it. Except for the yo. He, figured... <laughs> he took it all away. Yeah. He took it all away. And there's the inaugural episode, hopefully. We never know how everything's going to turn out. And I'm very excited about this, actually. Yeah, we've been trying to do this for far too long. We've been trying to find a way to do it. To... We, we've gone through a lot of iterations of, of what exactly it is that we've been trying to do here. Yes. And the rolled standard seems to be probably the most cohesive idea that we've had so far. And it's not a new one. We've uh, There's a lot of versions of this same podcast out there, uh, whether it be tabletop games like we're doing. I mean, there's ones that do specifically like card games and stuff. Obviously, movies and video games and TV shows, tons of pop culture, things like that. Um, just like this would be. But... We have a very specific passion for tabletop role-playing games, and um, there's obviously going to be ones here that we we and you will know. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of stuff here. I mean, even just today, that there are going to be a lot of people that know better than us about it already. Absolutely. And so it's a very new thing, too, and I'm very, very excited about it. Today, we're going to talk about our very first experience playing Pathfinder 2E. A good, I guess a good way to start with this would be our experiences in role-playing games or tabletop role-playing games specifically so far, because I'm probably the least of us uh, and the most mouthy. <laughs> um, I've only been playing since I knew you guys, to be honest. I don't even yeah. know. Uh, over three years now, maybe? That sounds about right. Just yeah, over? I mean, we'll get to four in... Ja- is it January? September. September? Okay. Oh, damn. So that's close. That's right around the corner. Yeah, it is. Holy shit. Yeah. Okay. What is our third anniversary of our table game coming up? And that was about a year into knowing each other. Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's... That's, that's, I, that's th- specifically our, our 5e table game. Yeah. Um, Homebrew nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you just... I mean, how do you how do you pile all the cool things that you want out of something, like, into one game? Like, it's it's like... By okay. breaking the fucking rules. Right, exactly. It's like, okay, we're, we're modding Dark Souls today, all right? Um, anyway, I played 3-5 for a day. For, yeah, for one whole day. And then we moved on to 5e for years. Almost and then three. moved into Starfinder and now mm-hmm. Pathfinder 2e. Yep. And this is really where we're at. Um, a lot of this is going to be really, really new for us. But what else have you guys done? Uh, I've played, been playing role-playing games since I was about 13 or so. I played a D and D three five at a friend's birthday party, and while his his father DM'd it in a chainmail shirt. Oh, that's so baller! That's kind of cool. It sounds amazing, but if you saw it, you'd be like, "That guy's a dork." <laughs> I suppose if one I of the feel guys like that's something one of us would do. I was just gonna say, if one of the guys came to the table like that, though, I would be so jacked. I'd be like, "Damn, I need to get a fucking cloak or something." Dude, I want like some secret garment that is chainmail. So you just hear the jingling, and you're like, "What is that?" Chainmail boxers. <laughs> yeah, my chainmail boxer briefs, bro. Me, me undies, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I've been playing Dungeon Dragons um, for, uh, I mean, on and off for you could say twenty years, but more off than on. Um, there was one point I remember in. I want to say like ninth grade, where I tried to make Diablo, like the original Diablo, into D and D. Oh my and god! I didn't know what I was doing, but I was just like, I, I thought I was innovating a new system, but I was really just copying it like verbatim almost. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm really, I'm really creating something here. And it's like, it's, no, Photo, photocopier is not a cre- not a creator. Yeah, <laughs> we all do fun stuff when we. Yeah, don't. but then you know, me and Aaron actually uh, were one day at war. We, we all worked together at one point. Uh, me and Aaron literally talking about Dungeon Dragons, and I'm like, we should get this going. We talked to another mutual friend of ours, Tony, who was like, yeah, I'll host it, I'm in. And then I was like, this would be something that Nate would totally be into. I talked to you about it, you got really excited, you got Levi, we got everybody involved, and just still excited about it, fortunately. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us are. It's it's strange, because like, a lot of what what you hear is that D&D games never really last. It's It's part of like, how it works. I mean, especially as adults, you got fucking lives, you got shit to do. Yeah. And... I like just dedicated read something yourself. not that long ago about a guy in Canada that's been running the same campaign for twenty plus years. Yeah, oh, I've seen that. I watched the a little uh, the little feature on him, a little documentary. It's a like, mini doc, if you will. It's like, dude, that is fucking that's, dedication. I that's love it. The amazing sense of community that I love about role playing games. 
Jones. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like he's been doing the same game for over 20 years with anybody who wants to come over and do I it. I feel it's... like he's got like a rotating cast. I can't remember, but I think he has a rotating cast of people who've been there and also new people who come along. And we have those two as well. We have characters that or players rather that kind of come and go. But before we get caught up on something else, sure. Let's have Aaron talk about his background in role playing. I'm 42 years old at this point. I've been playing role playing games since I was 13, 14. Started out with Dungeons and Dragons, Vampire the Masquerade, mm. Magic the Gathering, just a little bit. That's not really role playing, but you know, it's nerdy. So it's whatever. Still wizards, yeah. Yeah, still wizards. It's a card game, though. But yeah, uh, we all dabbled in that, I feel. Took a long break throughout my 20s and most of my 30s, and just kind of randomly with Mr. Christopher at work one day, we were just like, hey, we should play D&D. And here we are. Yeah, it never stopped. Really, like it, it always kept going in some form or another. Yeah, Depend, never, never mattered who was there. I think we've had, man, it feels At least like 10. fifteen to twenty people. I played a literal session with just you and your significant other, Nate, where it was like me DMing you two. Yeah, and that was all it was. And then we've also had games where I mean, I wasn't part of it, but there were literally two D and D groups, separate D and D groups, together, fighting the same battle. Yeah, um, people that had never met each other before that time. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's actually insane. Like it was incredibly awkward because we were so divided, <laughs> <laughs> literally across the room, I believe. Yeah, literally across the room. Uh huh. But yeah, we were like we wouldn't even talk to each other across the groups. It was just oh, that's so. Yeah, weird. it was just me and Tony and uh, Troy. Uh, no, Butler was there as well. Oh lord. Yep, yep. That was one of his first games, actually. Uh, oh man, I feel so bad for him. Yeah. Really, I feel like if if we ever get to a point, we should probably do. Um, yeah, we've got a horror story about another player a slash DM who just gave us such a bad taste in our mouth. I don't know what it is. Oh, man, it's jizz. It's totally jizz. I mean, I hope that's not what it is. <laughs> I'd like to leave it unidentified. I would I would actually really, really love to hear other people's horror stories. Like, my God, I, I've, I've found... I'm sick of talking about ours. Oh, right. <laughs> I've, I've found... I we have I'll... so many. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's 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 a negativity bias. You're always going to remember the bad things over the positive right, things, and you'll absolutely. dwell on those and talk about those. I mean, uh, the good thing about uh, things like Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop games, though, is that it is designed also to create very very cool moments like that too, so that you can have really good experiences and and stuff like that. I mean, like not not like things that. Even other people need to care about too much. Is it like uh, one of the worst things to do is tell other people about your D and D game? Yeah. Like, like I know that people just fucking don't care. It's like, I'm sorry, I didn't put two years of my time into your stupid fucking story or, right now. Or they get really confused about it because well, me and Butler will talk no... about people, the people at work about it, and they're like, "You guys did this? Like, you guys like are in the room like running around doing this? We're like, no, no, no we're sitting fucking. What do you think? But like, yeah, so oh, because because we just like put a sheet up on the wall or like in the doorway, and that was the portal to the. Fucking! <laughs> and, oh, everybody's gonna walk through the portal into the Feywild, guys. Let's go. What are we larpers? Yeah, no. Not saying that that's I like. I don't want to shit on larping or anything, but like. No, but if you're pretending to shoot the portal and stuff like that, you're taking it too far. Yeah, yeah. Carry I, the sword. You're right now. That stuff. Your little guy would be into it. Oh, well, he would for sure. No, and that's no. maybe why I'd be. I'd, I'd have to rethink it. Yeah, no, you can do it with him, but so don't. Yeah, let's. Him. Fourteen, and on a good day, he'd be into it. On a bad day, he'd just kind of roll his eyes and go back to his phone. That's actually probably one of the better reactions you can get out of a fourteen-year-old son, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was the I was one of those the most recently. Yeah, you were the youngest of the three. I, I I know better, but anyway, back onto the topic of Pathfinder. Yeah. Now this is a relatively new a relatively new system. Relatively. I don't know exactly when it came out. I feel like it was. Now this, we, we, we're playing sound like idiots because you're probably listening to this, being like, "Yeah, it came out in 2018," which I don't know if that's right or not, but we have no idea. Yeah. It's, that's my guess, though. No idea. Maybe, maybe 2019. We also have zero reference books with us currently. Yeah, we're real prepared. Oh, yeah. yeah, so very. <laughs> we just figured we'd sit down and talk about our first experience with it because it was definitely interesting. Not only because the game is interesting itself, obviously, but I I have no idea what kind of bat shit. I, some shit happens in this game that is like so out of the ordinary for me. Well, we're running the Age of Ashes module. Yes. Yep. Adventure Path. And Part A. <laughs> it's a di- there's a difference. No, the, the module is one book that uh, is just comes out at once, and then you run through that whole thing. Uh, the Adventure Paths are a monthly, um, a monthly subscription service, essentially that Paizo offers. Where yeah, you get each. They're always in a series of books. Uh, the Age of Ashes, one that we're running, is a six part series, and we're, we just started the first one, Hell Knight Hill. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's it's good, and I uh, I mean at least so far. I mean, what, how? So in the very first scripted part where we are in the town hall for this the monthly call to heroes, I died. I went down. You sure did. Really you know, well too. Fiery Inferno trying to save an NPC who dove into the fiery. See, Inferno. this is this is something that I did want to talk about right away too. Spoilery spoilers. If yeah. you if Spoiler you haven't alert. done this, uh, yeah. I I don't want to give you like verbatim all the shit that happens, but y- yeah, I we're in, we're in a building and it gets set on fire, and it feels like this uh, adventure path really 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 baits you to like, hey, you should probably follow this guy. Right. Like he's 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 freaking out. There's a fire going on. Whatever. This is the first dude out of this door. Fiery imp comes through, bites a councilman's face off. Dude d- dips NPC back into the just fire. Turns around. He was a fire method. You said I don't think I actually told you guys that till now. Honestly. No, I, I just well, remembered. I just to put it into when you were DMing. Well, I said impish, imp-like. I didn't want to tell you the name of it because like, I honestly couldn't remember how the identifying creatures mechanic works. So I was like, ah, eh, well, no, no, you don't know. <laughs> uh, however, you are you were likely to know what a fire method was. Uh, just to put it into perspective for anyone listening, I Christopher was the was the GM for the game. And then Nate, you played. Oh, well, did you explain it? Uh, a character named Corvus Coulter. He's like he's one of my favorite because he's like really, really fucking old. Oh, so I just also, get to play. Twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Yes. Awesome. He's really fucking old, and I just get to play like like a a. Do the a, voice a... real quick for everybody <laughs> listening oh, at home. That please. is necessary. What? what? You gotta close your eyes up. Oh shit! Sorry. Oh, what's going on? Wait. What do I hear an echo of my voice? Where are you? Why aren't you talking to me, my dudes? <laughs> so this is never no handled that in our party. Yeah, yeah he's incredibly a, hard to GM for because I can't keep my composure while he's doing this. It's, it, it's you guys don't leave me a good moment when it's just completely silent here. I get totally like fucking, I lose myself. Anyway, yeah, yeah he's he's, he's, a, he's a tiny little gnomish sorcerer, and uh, I, in our first actual combat encounter, went down in a single hit myself too. I got crit on by some the kind of weird dog the thing. goblin dogs yeah goblin yeah. dogs and they literally critical hit on me and did 18 damage two points over my actual like total health so i mean we were talking about whether or not this is like uh like whether this game feels balanced or not i don't think that we have a great basis for comparison whether or not we did poorly or whether we did well Fair. no matter what the outcome of our first session was going to be i don't think we have a great comparison for that but I do like how the game itself plays, like, mechanically for those moments. Like, when it comes to, like, critical hits and stuff like that, especially, mm. it's something that is, like, re- way, way more interesting to me. It's going to be weird if I get used to it and go back to, like, a normal game where, like, natural 20s matter. Yeah. I'm gonna like, oh, cool. So that's a uh, 26. It's like, dude, that's a natural 20. What are you doing, man? Of course. It's like, I, yeah. I don't know how you're doing this anymore. Yeah. But... Critical damage, adding uh, all damage together is yep, very yep. cool too, but also fucked me over pretty well as well. well you got critted on, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was very nice. Um, also, Aaron, you play... Crawl Rockfist, because I'm such a nerd that every dwarf I play is from the Rockfist clan. Uh, it makes them all... It makes, it, makes, it makes sense. It's easier for me, because I'm a nerd. Okay. I always do the same thing with dwarves. Like, I... I try to avoid giving them the gold hand name just because I'm like a really, really huge fan of uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. And the dwarf's name is Borodor Goldhand. Hmm. And it's, he's like, like looking into his background and stuff, it's like, oh man, this is this is really sad. Just think of how many burrow founds I've made. Oh yeah, like th- thousands of like burrow One founds. in every town. Literally, they run, they run blacksmiths like Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> logo and everything franchising is the way to go i feel like doors would be all about franchising they figured it oh. out man yeah yeah they're got very it. industrious people absolutely but uh our table game is also um joined then by uh nate's significant other uh who is playing uh primin last name last name <laughs> can't remember her name exactly but it's yeah. a prim we call her she's a gnome ranger a chameleon gnome so cool. uh, very rangers, cool rangers are so cool and you're uh, roommate Danny, who uh, is playing an elven wizard by the name of Greenworm the Proud. Greenworm the Proud. He's the newest of us, and really, he makes it the easiest for me to play play shit like my dude and my guy when I'm playing this character because it, it cracks him up so hard. And uh, it's it's I'm I'm actually really impressed with what he's doing. 
Yeah, uh, well, he's, more he's been a great addition to our group. Right, absolutely. And this is and it's a good example. I'd like to get him on here to talk about it too because it'd be great to see somebody's like who's very very new to tabletop games uh learning this because he's a wizard as well, which is <sighs> I'm not going to say more complex than potentially like, complex. Yeah, it, it as long as be. I've been playing, admittedly off and on, mm -hmm. I hate tracking spells. I hate tracking spell slots. For me, and to get deeper than the current conversation, for me, I don't really care too much about mechanics. For me, it's story play. Yeah. Oh man, that's what I love. Me too. Uh, it it makes it all the better because like I don't know why, but my characters like the way that I play them, no matter what their actual like personality is like i always end up finding a, like trying to find a way to make an npc laugh uh which is pretty much just making chris laugh which yeah. is like the easiest Super thing for me and i'll laugh at anything it it's it's so much more fun to me that way because then if it's if it's supposed to be a really serious moment now he's got to find a way out of it, oh dude the writing. Well, my character's all like well i'm like I study my, my notes and all this stuff pretty well beforehand, but I lose it because I can't handle it when these guys these guys are just crazy. I know, I know. These characters I feel, are always hilarious. I feel so bad because you do put so, so much effort into everything that goes into this I mean, stuff. There's other reasons too, of course, but uh you know. But but primarily, yeah, I I you know, I I yeah, I'll I don't know what it is. I think it's just like you know, you spend all this time by yourself working on it and you know it's, it seems like business at that point. And then the moment that it's like a fun party and table environment I just lose like control, not control, but I mean, that's because it's like a wild man. Shit, I mean, as an adult, it's it's very weird to be able to get together with your friends and play games. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it, I feel it's actually very healthy. I agree. It's I agree. Great for mental health. But like when it comes I, to, I literally like, said that in our in our group chats before. I was like, yeah, I need this. It's like my therapy. Yeah, my yeah. mental health day. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like a lot of the reason is because. It's just a bunch of people that want to get together, getting together. Uh, you you don't get that often. <laughs> it, it really like especially because it's like okay, I'm I'm sectioning off time um, in my uh, day or week or month or whatever to sit down and talk to people that I genuinely enjoy, whether or not yeah. it is this or not. It's I mean I'd very much rather be storytelling with you guys, but it also is a nice time to sit down and just hang out with you guys. For sure. I yeah. mean it's. I mean, especially now in the time of like quarantine, where we're for the most part stuck away from any real other form of entertainment. That I mean, it's this is fucking depression city, guys, and it's going to ha it's going to get worse and worse as as it gets colder. It's Minnesota, man. It's Put it in perspective. We are we are recording this early August 2020 in Minnesota. Yeah. So I mean, like we just get to stare the out. Temperature at last night was a balmy 50 degrees <laughs> in August. Was it? Yeah. yeah, it was bad, dude. Oh, I, I was getting home at I don't know two in the morning or so, and it was fifty degrees. What were you doing? Don't have, you have to answer that. <laughs> so, welcome back to the roll. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, here's here's a good question because this is pretty familiar, but at the same time, uh, a completely new way to play a game. Like, how do you guys feel when it comes to like the ease of access to this? I definitely feel there's a good learning curve. But even the end of our first session, it was coming naturally. Yeah. No, it was very easy by the end of the day. Yeah, I, I could kind of feel it, too, especially when it came to, like, the end um, combat. remembering uh, remembering what, like, a critical fail and a critical success is, is a really weird thing when you're doing... Uh, that was an um, incredibly simple system, though. Yeah, very absolutely. Easy. But, like, when you're coming from a very traditional, like, D&D &D sense of, like, 1 or 20, like, when somebody's like, okay, is that, that's a 28. I was like, ah, oh, you absolutely crit on me. I am, I am destroyed now. Critical success. Um, but along with that, like, I don't have any of those spells yet. But there are some really, really great spells later on that have really, like, all of the, like, even just a, a normal success against um, some of those spells. I, I will definitely look them up for a later reference so that I can talk about them because they're very, very cool. I know that there's one. It's not pest form. Or something, but it's uh, uh like some kind of like uh, bug polymorph or something like that. You can turn them into a little creature or whatever. But if they you. critical fail on it, they are turned into it permanently. Oh, I mean, damn. I'm sure that you can be like a rest, like a restoration spell or something will get rid of it or whatever. One but you could so. like thinking about this in a role playing sense, you could literally turn somebody into a like a cockroach and then put them in a jar on your hip and then carry around like 
a demon lord in cockroach form on your hip. I would talk so much schmack in game to this cockroach hip. Oh, dude, I would I would put together an <laughs> ant roach. farm. I would put together an ant farm of like horrible, horrible beings. Yes, it's a perfect it's a perfect way. It's like, dude, this is. I mean, you get to live for. I don't know. Do you get to live as long as an ant or like a a demon or whatever? Because that would be great. Would they then be? Like oh, with proportionately a... stronger, like Ant Man. No, no. I was actually just gonna say, if they just fail, they get turned into it for like ten minutes or something like that, and they keep all of their mental faculties and everything. If they critical fail, that's when all of their mental. Oh, they're just poof. They're a they're just a fucking ant. ant. It's like man, or grass. This is this is a really fuck. This is a heavy spell. Like. I, I, I don't I don't like making huge like like black and white comparisons between this and Dungeons and Dragons because it's 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 not fair. They're going in two different directions, you right. know. It's a completely different world. It's a different system. Right. It's like if like if somebody at like I I, I don't know. It, there's there's probably a million good comparisons, but regardless, Dungeons and Dragons wanted to go in a more easily accessible way, and I do not have any problem with that i mean it's helped to bring me into the game way easier and a lot of people that we know but paizo decided to go with this is how the game works well how can we make it work better without compromising the mechanics of the game and i think they did it well like the of that with character creation there's so many options oh not my god yeah s- not too many like you're overwhelmed and they all make sense i agree pest form pest form that's what it is. is that it really it's exactly what it is yeah, it's a first level primal spell. Oh, no, there's, the, too. there's no way it can be first level. You can turn a motherfucker. Well, you know. forever. Well, let me look at the details on that. Okay, I think it says something about polymorph, like like something polymorph specifically, maybe like a fourth or fifth level spell, something like that. Don't know, but no, you're absolutely right, Aaron. Uh, creating a character was a perfect in between for me between like say five e. Uh, like 3.5 or Starfinder or Pathfinder. I, I never really played the first Pathfinder, but I feel like Starfinder does a damn good job of uh, representing the same mechanics in a yeah. different format. I have the Pathfinder 1E core rulebook, and it feels so much like the path of the Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 player's hand. Well, see that... Like, so much like it, it's, it was like... That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, words I'm thinking of, I can't say. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot remember what it's called, but it really reminded me of the past, and it was... Like was looking into a slightly distorted mirror. I mean, I guess if the mirror showed you the past. <laughs> no, specifically that. No, it was. I can't remember what the word. Uh, reminiscent. There oh. it is. Found it. Okay. So yeah. So literally, pest form. Uh, you transform into the into a battle form of a tiny animal. That's, that's not something you're looking no. for. That's you doing it. Yeah. But um, I think that the character creation was a good example of something in between five e and like. Pathfinder, like, uh, because it was very organic as it was our first experience, we all sat down and did it step by step together at Nate's kitchen table. Yeah, yeah, it's the best Weeks way to ago. do it. Yeah, <laughs> best way to do it. Not only because then you can help each other figure out this and this. Like, if you, I mean, it's it's a complicated looking sheet. So there's the I like I don't blame anybody for being like feeling like they're looking at something daunting. But at the same time, I don't feel like building my character was about me. Like in a three point five sense, I know that not everybody that plays three five is like this, but it's way heavier in your ability to like min max and create something mechanically like ridiculously overpowering and having thousand different options. Yeah, and you're, you're right. And then there's five e that cuts your ability to do things way drastically, and then makes you, or th- but then gives you way more utility in the one thing that you do. I unfortunately they do it in a couple in a couple cases that they shouldn't have the way that they did cuz like there's balancing issues that people need to take care of in everything. I mean it's I mean like it's amazing to me that games like video games like League of Legends and stuff like that or Smite or something keeps keeps themselves relevant because you have a hundred something different heroes with all their different abilities and all that stuff. and yeah, they They're keep daunting it. when you first get into them. You're like, I don't know who to pick. There's right. literally 150 people. But then it's like, them. you're adding another character in here who has to. Pretty. Yeah, that's, I've only got you so far, bud. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. It's like, you're adding a character into this game that, that has to balance with everything else that's going on there and not be too overpowered. And I feel like when you bring that into a tabletop way, it's like way harder to figure that out. Because yeah, it's, you're right. like, you can't just sit down and like literally... Playtest through twenty levels 
that was and understand it in, and understand it versus every single thing that you do. And I'm and this is with everything. This there's probably criticisms that people have with two E already that are horrible in some way. Like mine, mine is really that like like one who is way too overpowered in five E and one who's way too underpowered is overpowered is the circle of the moon druid, insanely overpowered, like just standard build for a druid. Like broken back city. It's it's insane. Like just being able to turn into a, a like an earth elemental is a perfect example. A huge, huge benefit, and you can just like meld back into the wall and then come out and beat the shit out of somebody and then go back and not even have to worry about it. Plus like a hundred and fifty almost somewhere around there HP. It's it's kind of crazy. And then like on the opposite side, almost anything that a ranger does. Yeah. A hor- horribly, horribly maintained. And they tried to fix it, it with Unearth and Arcana stuff and whatever, or the things that they made as a revived or a revised hunter's class mm-hmm. or ranger class. And it nobody was really satisfied with it. And they made sure to say they weren't going to mess with it anymore. Yeah. Whereas 2E, I am almost sad that Heather picked a ranger. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, these, these dudes are built really sweet. Like animal companions are a perfect example. They actually are something that can become relevant later on. I feel like in Dungeons and Dragons, it's way harder to justify having a pet. It feels like every every detail in Five E that was supposed to give you any kind of customization in a way was all just kind of overlooked. A lot of it, like feats, you know, the feats is is like a, a sub chapter. It's not even that. Whereas, like in every other, nearly every other game, you're seeing like a whole chapter on feats. Right. They and had like eight pages. Yeah, something yeah, like that. If that, if that, I think it was like four. I'm probably wrong, but it wasn't many. It really wasn't many at all. Or like three, five. There's like books, like actual can- canonical books that are like extra stuff, like the books of feats. Yeah, actually, that's one of those things too that I was, I, I was. Uh, and if you want that in five e, you got to go buy some from Cobalt Press or whatever. You know, yeah, from, like from people, a third party. Absolutely, Cobalt Press does a good job of making some crazy, yeah, crazy stuff for five e too, and I, I really enjoy that. But um, yeah, I guess that goes along into the. Uh, do you feel like, for any reason, you were overwhelmed or underwhelmed going into character creation? Like I felt like it was a perfect mix between the two. Right. I, it was very organic. It was very easy. With okay, I'm a dwarf. I'm gonna pick this and this and this, and it just flowed, mm-hmm. and it flowed well. Yeah, I, I had zero issues. It was a lot of options. And yeah. Initially, you're looking at all of this information, and it's almost intimidating but then you just kind of look at it for a minute and you're like oh this is bang 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 yeah it's like uh as soon as i pick one of these 20 things that you had you know whatever like the rest of them become irrelevant it's not something you're gonna have to worry about later it's a slow funnel and it's like which of these five types of dwarves do you want it's not hard to pick one of five things no you know but it is it's just having to do it like 10 different times it feels yeah. daunting i didn't feel that way at all i was like holy shit i can be like a a, a chameleon gnome where i can change my hair color and shit yeah i, mean, I was like exactly I, i've never think. thought of that or like just the lore that comes behind gnomes i was like i care way more about these characters now than i ever did just having them be a an existing race right you can mentally or i can i can't speak for y'all <laughs> you can mentally actually picture your character forming oh for real rather than okay this is a piece of paper it represents my dwarf you and fate touch gnome correct yeah okay yeah and i and the sorcery stuff lend itself to that too a lot like oh, I, when definitely it, when it came down to like all the bloodlines and all that stuff very very cool i didn't know that that was a thing at all until i i, I rarely place casters um i hate it <laughs> i hate it <laughs> I, I like playing a bard, even though I'm terrible at like role playing a bard. You know, like if I gotta, like, I'd much rather be a bard in the sense that I'm like, I, I, I'm charming if I have to be that more than like an actual performer. Yeah. Because that's that's way more too of a storyteller hard. than like a musician. Absolutely. Yeah. Catch well, people's however, interest type though, of thing. My first bard I ever played, I absolutely loved. I told you, man. You will meet the Pample Moose. Well, I was just <laughs> going to say. When we review our Curse of Strahd. Right, oh, for, as, for as much as you hate being a spellcaster, you're the best bard I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> it's good, it's good, man. It's so funny. That's that's another thing that I'd like to get into more of uh, with this. But like, uh, back to just straight up uh, Age of Ashes. Yes. Um, 
I'm so bad at uh, adventure path names. Uh, Curse of Strahd is the only one I've been able to remember because it's something that's like just been well, that's it's rebranded. Not adventure path. That's it's a, a module. module. How yeah. god damn it! I'm gonna leave my own up. house. <laughs> 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 we've already talked about uh we've already talked about uh you and me both going down uh going unconscious and very nearly dying mine came from our first combat experience and uh after that i spent most of the time terrified to be anywhere <laughs> near something that could be combat it was a very anxious session much more so than most of the sessions that we've all played before well, I mean, like, the the whole campaign starts with a really complicated, like, building on fire kind of situation where you're just, like, a ridiculous amount of people in the room, which actually, to give you guys a little bit of insight, I, I messed that numbers up. It's supposed to be 10 on each side of the room being 20 total, and I was like, okay, 20 on each side. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I doubled the amount of bystanders in that room accidentally, which, eh, whatever, it worked. But, yeah, it was a complex scenario overall for everybody, and... uh yeah, what a way to like just jump into a new game is like here's a complex scenario, figure it out. Right, it's like we have this moment where you like sit down and like make each other laugh for a little while in converse like conversation and character. Mm -hmm. Then it's like okay, let's uh, let's head over to this place. We'll we'll see what the fuck all this hero stuff's about and whatever. And then like four minutes into the actual thing, it's just fire and death. Yeah. And fucking... By the way, the building's on fire. Get people out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, ideally, what like because the, the the adventure path itself wants you to do a specific thing, or there's multiple things you could do. But one of the ones they mentioned, and I did give you guys the pro the proper um, hints to allude to it, which is rare that I'll, that I'll actually get those. <laughs> Usually I'm like, why did they do this? Oh, because they didn't tell them about all this crap. Uh, but no, uh, the water towers, they kind of wanted you to bucket brigade it, which I ended up doing in just narration near the end there. But ideally they wanted you guys, and there was an option, and it was like the best case scenario option, was for you guys to command the people in the room like, hey, Bucket Brigade, everybody, like, get that done. And it wouldn't take that much to get done. And that would have solved the entire thing. However, you guys, like, shooting water at it or shooting wind at it. And, like, or, like, you tried to fight it with a net. No, you didn't actually do that. But no. you I, I, fucking close. So, like, I was just, like, thinking about that scenario in my head. Like, just visualizing the scene, right? So this dwarf, he sees, this This happens, this, 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 uh, during the city council meeting, you could call it that, bursts through a door, right? He's screaming about a fire. And fire troop just comes flaming out of that door, just just, a, just an inferno through that door, catching the room on fire. This dwarf's like, fuck, I'm running in there. <laughs> like, Dude, just, he's a and then he comes out of it, just, just Tiananmen Square. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, hey, I went down. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, you're on fire. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But he's also like a dragon barbarian, are you not? He's a gold dragon barbarian, yeah. yeah. Doesn't that still have but to do with fire? But that doesn't give me elemental resistance. I, I, I don't, I, 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 it, it might later. Right. I don't think it does. I know it doesn't now, but it, uh, it gives it adds the fire element that... to my to my rage damage. Oh jeez. Oh right. It, optionally, draconic rage is a separate thing. Actually, apparently. See, I was gonna I was gonna say like. And I learn more. I did. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's that way. I didn't I didn't question it for a second because I'm like, oh well. I mean, in my mind at least, like meta knowledge, like oh, this is like a tiny little dragon man. It's okay. We're gonna be good. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Christopher's like, okay, that'll be 21 damage. Like, I'm leaving. I get out of the fire. Please. <laughs> well, okay, okay. To expand on that, my initiative was so high that I went before anyone else. I was first in the initiative. Yeah, order. first to act in that scenario, period. So I was charging as I talk with my hands <laughs> that everyone can see. Yeah, this, oh, yeah, this beautiful visual medium. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. You betcha. Oh, no. So Minnesota, bro. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm from Pennsylvania, honestly. No, he is. It's the saddest steak on the lake. <laughs> <laughs> steak on the lake. Anyway, so this gentleman, this NPC, comes out of this room screaming, Oh, there's a fire. So I'm like, Oh, I have to save this man. So I go running at him. He turns around and runs back into the fire. So I'm like, Oh, okay. He can make it. I can get in there and get him out. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, you you're you're explaining that too, and I was like, okay, well that makes sense. But uh, overall, you know, I, I really don't remember the point of that guy. I think he was just like a like a whistleblower. It was a device to. I think he was just the guy that fire. was like, hey, there's a fire, and then you're like, I need to save that man. I, I, I honestly, 
I I think he was supposed to just run into the room with everybody else, but it was my fault because I'm like he ran back out that way. Why he ran back that way, I don't know. It made him seem important, I think though, which is when it was was kind of a mystery. I do remember you saying like the reason why we started heading toward the insert whatever name here, the place that used to be cool oh and now it's oh. like goblins everywhere. Citadel Altarian. Oh, yeah, it, my bad. I remember you saying that he or somebody said that he not the same guy. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Not the same guy. Not the same guy. Oh, oh, you're talking about a guy that started the fire, not, not. Yeah, the, the, the they believe it was a specific guy. The people, the guards in the town, believe it was a specific dude who started the fire, and that they saw him run off that way. It's also the same person that Heather's character, uh, Prim, saw leave. That, the, yeah, that and, was the familiarity. Then I. Yep. Okay. Okay, That's I'm who understanding you said now. That guy was. Yeah, and I I realized that, but then I was like, wait, that wasn't him, and I even told you guys that like that wasn't him, and I was like, oh, he must have just looked like him. <laughs> Musta. Well, no, because like the character that you guys are looking for up there is a halfling, and you characters know that. Uh, and that guy was a human, so you're really oh, hard shit, to mistaken yeah. for each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just hard, hard, hard on the stature, man. Like you just he looked what, short. He just looked short. Sorry, guys. Could be that. Well, guy. you know, it was all the heat uh, from the flame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, causing it was... the air to waver and shimmer. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody looked the same in panic. It was a mirage. Yeah. Oh God. No. It, either way. Like I said, it was a hard scenario to run because of so many little things to do there, too. However, I will say it was very nice that in the Adventure Path itself, it mentions round per round with the fire itself. I does. was literally just going to bring that up. Like, very, very cool. Um, having like our first in-initiative encounter being with fire was weird for like a second and a half. And then like you're starting in to implement the actual mechanics of the game, Yep. like being... The fire spreads this many spaces, this 50, amount of turns. percent of how many spaces it already is. And so then it's 12, smoke inhalation be being a, another thing in there. It's like, it gives you a really good idea of how, like, you're going to just be acting under pressure in this moment. You're yeah. not really going to be fighting anything. I mean, I, shoot I a fire method in the face and then figure out what you're going to do about the rest of these normal people. Yeah. And uh, it, it was... Normal it was, townsfolk are squishy. Yeah. Oh, my God. For I sure. mean, fuck, we're pretty much normal townsfolk. I mean... Not much, not much, not, not much of a notch above it. No, not very. I'll tell you right now, though, that moment where I we were in the uh, Citadel Altarian. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man, nice. You're learning. <laughs> we were in there, and uh, I pretended to be a goblin, a uh, Lurzui disguise, and then ha- it did nothing for me because <laughs> it was like a bugbear, I believe. Yes, they didn't care about you being a goblin. Right, they just absolutely. They cared about you not being them. Sure, which is fine. <laughs> not part of the... It's not like I'm going to be like, hey, man, it's not going to do anything. Like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> of you. course right. not. Like, but at the, the time, same time. Like, I feel so damn stupid about this. In Butler's campaign, I cast Hold Person on a gelatinous cube. And he's like, yeah, it doesn't do anything. I'm like, fuck, it probably doesn't. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just sitting there like, last fucking spell slot. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it was actually just about like this weird mechanical moment that happens where like I get out of this, uh, like a conversation with this. I expected it to be an encounter right away. And then it ends up being so. Of course, and I miss a telekinetic projectile, and then Dan picks it up before it hits the ground, critical hits, a telekinetic projectile crit for 20 damage and murders a bugbear, like, outright. Yeah, you flung a book, you projectile the book across the room, the bugbear ducks it, he grabs it in the rebound and flings it the other way in the side of the head and just breaks its neck. Amazing moment, especially because I was like, okay, there better be, like, there better be retaliation for the one hit or, like, the one-hit wonder that I was in the very beginning of this. Yeah. Like, just come in, attack me once, I'm down. To see that happen, I was like, okay, this is where the balance is then, because this is not supposed to happen all the time. Mm-mm. Unfortunately, resting is far more realistic in this game, oh, though. Yes, and yes. I, that's my one of my highlights of the game, I think. Uh, the resting thing feels so real. You better be able to find healing potions like like available all over the place. Yeah, they don't cost a bunch. Up. I mean, they do right now, but they won't I'm sure they won't cost a bunch when, you know, I mean, like normal people aren't heroes. We've gone through that weird, you know, like we are the 1% yeah. of the people that like make crazy money and kill monsters and shit like yeah. that. But man, like Dan has zero constitution. Literally zero constitution, which means that level 1 well, right now modifier. Mo- modifier, yeah. Which means that level 1, he'll take an 8-hour rest. And regain one HP. Yep. Fucking brutal. Ouch. So brutal. I I love it as much as I hate it because yeah. it's like this makes sense. This totally fucking makes sense. You're living in a world where it's magic and shit like that. You drink a potion and your wounds heal up and blah blah blah. And like, 
you sleep at night and you feel one hit point better. That sounds about right to me, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if your constitution you got broken is higher, ribs, you're not going to sleep it off in one night. Yeah, no. But like, if your constitution is higher than that, you'll feel a little. I mean, obviously, you're going to feel a little bit better. Like in, yeah. in a real world scenario, I, I hate when I have to compare the real world to a place where you can teleport and change your gender and fight dragons and shit. Oh man, literally. That was like the weirdest thing to just run into as like a standard. Not saying that it's weird, weird, but for it to be just a easily commonplace, like you can just drink a potion and become somebody else. Yeah. I mean, you know how um like you know how like this world would be a perfect world if you could <laughs> if you could just do that. Oh, for sure. There would be far less people having a fucking have fuck it. I don't want to have this conversation right no, now. No, 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 I don't. Yeah, no. It's just it's just like such a cool weird addition to a game that I I personally would have thought of because I'm of course just a straight white cis man. Yeah. <laughs> Textbook. But um now I'm curious because of how new it is. Um how easy do you think it would be for us or or anybody really to put um their own like homebrewed content in into a game like this cuz I haven't looked into the I'm I haven't looked into that someone already has. Sure. Oh, I guarantee Absolutely. It. Definitely. But I don't see it being horribly difficult. I can also, with any homebrew, I can see it easily being overpowered. Yeah, I find it, I, I imagine it's, it's very easy to come up with things to add, but I imagine it's very hard to balance. I probably. feel like items, magical items would be the easiest one to homebrew because you have the easiest platform for, like even just in the book, it has tons of magical items in there, and yeah. I haven't looked into any of them, really. Except for the ones you found. Yeah, I just don't want to. I don't want to spoil myself with the. I mean, obviously, there's the normal shit that you're gonna find. Yeah. There, there's no way you're gonna avoid that. But like, I figured that if you're gonna make your own homebrew items, that would be your template, so that even if you do create something that's overpowered, at least you know what generally it will be on a scale of like when you should have it. You know, because I've made a lot of stuff like way early on when I was like really really excited about creating stuff like that, and I realized yeah. I'm like, oh shit. This is not going to be stuff that anybody sees until they're level like 13, 14. And I, I, it's just like, okay, I'm going to add this and give it this ability and do this. And it's like, That's they're all so cool. cool. It's cool. And a lot of them don't have like a long, like, it's not like a page long item list or anything like that. But like, damn, you give that to a level six dude on accident, he's just going to murder through everything. Yeah. I mean, and that's. Much have done that before. Yeah. It was, so you, <laughs> you, then you have to ramp up everything that you do. Oh, yeah. And then there's the motherfuckers that come by and they're like, oh, Rock Shoss is not supposed to have that much health. It's like, yeah, no shit, man. I'm sorry, but you're hitting with a god sword. If so. you want that sword or you want this Rock Shoss to have less hit points, you can't have both. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, I, have, I can't let you just walk through me, man. I'm a grown man. I got to have a little bit of pride. However, the Rock Shoss didn't have many hit points. No, of course. <laughs> yeah, you, of guys course kill, you guys like, killed him. Well, the thing is, if, if you want to give me like a cinematic scenario where we're not going to get into combat, we're doing that because that's cool. Like, um, what we tried to get into combat with the Rakshasa in that random scenario, uh, and then we call him Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger decided to <laughs> snap its neck, right? Mm-hmm. With which made sense, um, because of the amount of damage. He, I can't remember why it made sense. He stunned him. Oh, right then it makes sense. Monks, uh, man. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't. I I, I really into wonder a... though if that thing had legendary resistance and I just didn't use it. I don't remember if Rakshasas have that. They like. Oh man, uh, somebody is yelling at us so bad right now. Yeah, they fucking do, or they fucking do. <laughs> of course they don't. You can just stun them and murder that fucker. Yeah, no, I uh, see. Like that's that's the part that like when I look at three point five stuff, people create homebrew classes and races and all sorts of stuff all the time. Oh yeah, and it, and it blows my mind the level of stuff that they do. Uh, for our it. sorcerer is using the Hemomancer, um, homebrew uh, archetype. Oh yeah, for the five E stuff that he's yeah, doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. But I mean, like. When it comes to this, it seems harder to figure out for me. Like, I wouldn't mess with it. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't either. Mostly because, like, if you're coming up with a homebrew class of your own, that means you have to come up with class feats oh, that yeah. are specific to each level and have and give you, like, you have to have, like, say, four for level four. They all have to sound good enough for you to think about picking any of them, unless you've already created that. Like, being just a sorcerer, looking at my first to second and fourth level feats, I'm like, I have no fucking clue what I'm going to do with this stuff. Yeah, I have no idea how I'm going to build myself out because uh, all of this looks cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan being a wizard, looking into it, like even just his traditions uh, or, or thesis is what it is, like uh, yeah. meta magic or all that kind of stuff. I don't know how to pick that because I 
think I'd pick Met- Meta Magic, but I mean, there's there's one that allows you to like like just switch out your spells, take a few minutes every day, and switch out your spells to something that you might need. That could be clutch as hell. I think, yeah, I, I believe that's just like a wizard mechanic in general. Right, and that's what I mean is like if you create your own class, like homebrew your oh, own class, right. you need to be able to come up with the equivalent of that that doesn't make somebody just pick oh i'm i'm absolutely going to pick uh you know well, the one inch punch or whatever because it's literally going to be the end all be all whatever and then everything else is left behind i feel like again going back to circle of the moon druids and 5e is a perfect example of that like you get some cool stuff from the other ones man but being able to wild shape as a bonus action uh your your crs are different you can turn into an elemental you get all sorts of other weird things that you can do. It's like, that's so overpowered in a way that you could have given some people some uh, archetypes, some of those abilities, and balance it out between them so that it feels like you might want to do something different, you know? I mean, I I picked Spores just because I... I mean, my character, it made sense for him to have it. And it is not ideal most of the time. I <laughs> We fight undead dudes, and I am half useless most of the time. Do necrotic and poison damage. Oh, Holy yeah. shit. Useless. But he is so cool in, like, the concept of him is cool. Yeah. That's that's a problem for me in the way that, like, you shouldn't have to give up usability for, like, what you actually want to be and what you want to do. Yeah. And that's, like, that's why I don't think I could ever feel like I could comfortably homebrew anything. Like, like when it comes to class or race specifically, those things are... In this game, I think a homebrew race would be easier to do. Yeah. Um, or even just simple feats. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be fine. Magic items. Monsters, perhaps. Um, yeah. I, 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 classes, I, haven't I would looked, stay away from entirely. I haven't looked personally. at a single monster stat block for 2e, which is good. Yeah. No, I don't, I'm I don't not really, really want to know what's <laughs> going on because I'm, because I'm not running it, man. I want to be surprised by it, too. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, I, however, I, I got the bestiary recently, and yeah, I've been comparing them to the monster manual from 5e, and it's just, just, I mean, I don't want to use, like, terms like this, but it's better. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, to make this clear, though, by the way, for anybody who is, like, so true into 5e, I don't blame you. Yeah. I, it's, that's it's fine. perfectly fine, man. I, I enjoy the shit out of it in, in the way that, like, I, I know m- most of my tabletop stuff is straight up out of fifth edition dungeons and dragons like it i i will always know more about that than i will know about 2e i'm sure just well, because it is time for that's how it's we'll, we'll ask you that same question in five years fair enough <laughs> but it's it's just like it feels good to understand the game almost completely like nobody's ever all you going ever to need to know is understanding your characters right absolutely. that's all you ever need to know or whatever your role is at the table you know no like yeah like the rock says know your role <laughs> you don't need much more than that it's it's like it's well, I've been I've been talking to new people at uh, interested players at work, and uh, me and Butler are thinking of running a game where it's like me and him, and then three other people, right? The three people who've never played before, and I kind of want to do that with you if you have like three or with you, uh, three friends that have never played before. You know, I'll run a game. You can be a, you can be the, the experienced player. We can teach these three people. But I was telling them like because they're like, oh, these mechanics seem complicated. Two out of my three friends are in the room. No, I understand. Oh, shit. <laughs> the, third, the third one already plays with us. No, I was kidding. You, you, yeah. mentioned, you mentioned other people that, haven't been, that I've never heard of before. No, yeah, uh, once or twice. Yeah. I, no. yeah. <laughs> I was telling them, because they're like, oh, they're kind of sounding like me and brother will talk mechanics pretty heavily, and he'll, uh, they all get a little daunted by that fact. I'm like, don't worry at all about mechanics. Don't worry about telling me that you're going to use this action or this action. Tell me exactly what you want this guy to do in this situation, and I'll tell you if it's possible, or I'll help you narrow it down to a point where you can mechanically do it. Like the example I was using is that let's say you want to jump off a chandelier, right? Jump and grab a chandelier and swing off and stab a guy with a dagger right at the bottom of the stairs. Mm-hmm. You know, down at, which is badass. Right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an acrobatics check. Then we're going to do an attack roll. Uh, your degrees of successes on those things is what's going to determine how close to your idea that happened. Right. Let's say, for example, you didn't make that acrobatics check. You likely didn't grab that chandelier, but you did manage to dive yourself down there. Let's say you didn't make that. You made that attack roll, though. Uh, you didn't land exactly as you were planning to, but you did manage to just dive, miss a chandelier, and hit them still. That's impressive. And I would probably have you, if you failed acrobatics check, I'd have you do that attack roll at a disadvantage because you're not in the, right. you're, you're not doing what you thought you were going to do. Right. So and, and you're yeah, improvising you from that point. Yeah. But uh, let's say you failed that attack roll as well, then you're you you're crumble at their feet prone. Right. right. Now that mechanically may not be the way it really works, but that makes tons of sense due to the snare that you tried to prevent or tried to uh, execute. 
Now, let's say you you pass both of those attack those two rolls. Yeah, that happened exactly as you were planning it. Right, and that's awesome. Right, as long as the distance works out and and you have the. Now I was just trying to, to figure happen. out exactly how those same scenarios fit mechanically. Like, not necessarily for any of us or any of the people that are trying to get into it. That's fine. Right, but like uh, how that translates into like the three action system of two uh, e. Let's see what I would probably do there is is in the exact same scenario. I'd probably call it like a stride action. Uh, using the acrobatic acrobatic skill, sure, yeah, and then your single attack roll, yeah, so it still would work as long as that's within the right distance. That's good to go, yeah. And like, I don't like, I don't, I don't mind giving leeway mechanically if it means that this cool thing can happen. Like, if it's like, well, it's only 30, 35 feet away, I can only move thirty feet. It's like, well, who cares? Yeah, you do that anyway because you got some speed and you got some momentum. You're jumping, you're swinging off a chandelier, jumping and a swinging at a gaining distance. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's it's a cool it's a cool thing to 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 execute, and I don't want to say no because the rules won't allow you to do this because of five feet or something stupid like that. Right, so. right. I mean, I tend to be a rules lawyer a lot of the time, and that's mostly just and that's literally for which is helpful and I for, appreciate it. for us. That's that's a I'm sure it's such an uncommon opinion. No, here's the thing: if if okay, when I make a ruling or whatever, I say something, and you're like, no, it works like this. Okay, cool. I'm glad because why the hell did I buy these books if we're not using the rules? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you I mean? Can, like, absolutely. You, no. I mean, I mean, and that, that I literally took that from uh, uh, the YouTube channel XP to Level Three. He was reading comments, and that was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's that's correct as hell. Yep. That's a that's a that's a really good way to think about it. Like, why are you trying to make up your I, own rules if you bought all these books? Right. I right. I really <laughs> actually, unfortunately, I started doing it because of da bad dungeon mastering. Uh, not uh, any fault of your own, sir. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate you lifting up the hook. It really was like because a lot of the people that were sitting at our table felt defeated in a lot of situations where they shouldn't because mechanically things were working better on the dungeon master's side than they were for us doing the same things. Right. No. And it, and, it, and it had nothing to do with roles. I understand where roles can put you in a situation where it's, I mean, Without even being in combat, roles can TPK. That's a chaos factor. Okay, absolutely, which is fine. But when the game is designed to be used against you by somebody who is uh, dungeon ma like being a game master or dungeon master maliciously, yeah, then that's why I started digging deeper and deeper into the rules that affected us personally more. Yeah, and that's one of those things too that is interesting for me going into. Um, is that like failing on a natural twenty? No, it's nothing that severe. <laughs> Because that's like I'm talking oh. about a specific incident. Oh God! Yeah. Wait, did that happen? You, you, I did that. No, uh, yeah, you your perception check you for your eggs, 20. man. Oh, the, oh God, no, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. you're right. That happened. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you're right though. I know. And he was like, "Oh, not twenties don't matter." And I'm like, "No, that's true. Okay, that's that's totally fine." Does a twenty-five beat a twenty-one? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. It's like, well, your math is wrong now. <laughs> right. I'm packing up my stuff and leaving. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. And that, that literally happened. <laughs> I'm sorry that this 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 little funny moment didn't work out for you because it was shitting on somebody else. But like, uh, not for you, for him, oh, if no, it was supposed to go. But it's just like. But I uh, take that contact personally. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. There's no reason to do it. And I'm always trying to not, not maliciously myself i'm not trying to be an or like an i gotcha or i told you so type no. of dude either i just want everybody to be playing on the same field right like it's if we're running a race and you're fucking it, like you're half the, the track ahead of me because of just things that you've decided right count it's like well i'm it's like i'm i'm this much more important i'm 30 feet more important than you it's like yeah. it's then then this game is rigged already and and nobody's going to win nobody's going to have fun you don't have to win to have fun no and i don't think everybody but, agrees with that but I mean, we all do losing but. is <laughs> losing is not really like simpatico with having fun either no no at least if you're losing and there's no way to say like man i really feel cheated out of this or whatever like unless you're talking about the role of your dice it should be fun, regardless. I mean, I I get tense in combat scenarios, and I the reason is because oh yes, I, you do absolutely. It's because I'm just like oh shit, it's man. So, like, so, I just so went snippy. I just went. It's like okay, I went down. I have nothing that I can do to help you guys now. No, he'll so say these exact luck. words, but with so much attitude. Oh, absolutely. Like, nothing I can fucking do to help you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No, there's but times no, where no. I'm like, are you mad at me? No, no, of course not. No, <laughs> I uh, well, I'm, I'm, I've gotten over that now. The last time, know, but yeah, the, the last first, time was like, uh, when I went down. Actually, in this game, when I went down, yeah. uh, you're you're like, that's 18 damage. I'm like, all right, I'm down. 
but it was because I was reading so that I could get information for Dan because he was trying to, like, he was trying to get to, like, the next move. And as soon as I went down, he's just like, oh. I'm like, all right, I'm down. I got to fucking figure this out so quick. Dude, yeah, shit got dire quick. Constantly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But that's actually really, really nice I uh, in, in the way that, like, we're really going to, I mean, there have been games that we have played, and I'm sure a lot of people are like this, especially because, you know, you start having fun, you're getting into a groove, everybody's enjoying themselves, and then shit gets a little sour, and uh, oh, yeah. everything can get brought down really easily from that place. And... It, People will try to avoid that, um, mechanically try to avoid that, um, and I understand that because yeah. you don't want people to be, like, you know, just, like, silently leaving your house at the end of the night and shit, <laughs> right. you know? We've been there. <laughs> We've been there. Not with me. It's, I mean, it has happened with my game, but right. uh, we, to put it in perspective for anyone who's wondering, uh, we had another, I'm not going to say names or anything because it's not, that's not the point here, but no, no. Our, our regular, our long time table game, we went back and forth. I, it was me and another guy who were constantly DMing the games. So it was, we had our own game. It was almost like every other week, both ran our own games. And the difference was, like, I was letting you guys flourish as players because the story is for your, for you. It's not for me. Like, I'll give you the template for you guys to run your story on. Right. Your character admittedly, story. admittedly broken. Yeah, admittedly broken, only because it was our first time into 5e, and I... Creating a whole new world. Yep, I've homebrewed everything, the entire thing, and it's still running. Yeah. Um, but it's... it's and it, and it, Honestly, it's it's the balance is slowly getting there. You notice that? Like, it seems like it's, it's better every time. Yeah. I mean, there's people... It's almost at the point where somebody goes down in... Any, regularly. In, I never in, kill in... anybody, but I always drop you. I drop you guys all the time. Yeah. And then that... that I mean, even just for us, like, weirdly... Even in character, we start getting to a point where it's like, oh, God, man, maybe we're over our fucking heads yeah. for, like, the first time. Well, to, that's kind of what I'm trying to No, absolutely. That's, I that's want you guys to be, be able to realize at a certain point that maybe we should run. I've never seen it yet, though. Hmm. <laughs> Somehow. No, I know. Well, what totally it is, happens. is, like, I'll get to the point where I'll almost kill you. ever. No player runs. No, nobody runs. You, you always, you always have it in your head. It's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the one to stand at the door. You know, like I'm the one who knocks. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be the one that stands at the door. I will. You won't get past this line. Right. You know, but not so much. It's not us. gonna happen, dog. No. I'm sorry, but uh, that's a that's a fucking demigorgon, my dude. And good fucking luck. Hey, to be fair, though, you faced demigorgon, demogorgon, demogorgon. Yeah, I, I always think demi as well. <sighs> I know. Why you gotta? Not change things and not be the way I think they are. <laughs> Say it right, the wrong way, <laughs> the way I want it. <laughs> no, uh, I don't yeah, know. Over, his, his, but his game, though, overall was I think he he was he had his story to tell, which is fine if you can get the players to be on board with it and you want to you can still let them tell their story, which we didn't. To be to give you more insight into the how, how much he uh, didn't let us run our own stories, but he wrote our backstories for us. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like an absolute no. Like you never do unless the other players like, hey, write my backstory for me. In which case, yeah, you, you gave yeah, you permission. Somebody with amnesia, no one's gonna say that, or, or, or they don't care enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's their. I mean, you don't really want that guy around anyway. So I mean, fuck him. You and me helped build Ezra's backstory, but that was like us together. A lot. That was like a you lot. giving me the idea and me kind of just giving it a narrative. Mm -hmm. But it was all, and then like there were certain situations where I had you play through it, like when you were like discovering your mom's situation. Right. And that was something that I, you were on board with the whole time. I wasn't like. Telling you like this is the way it is, bro. This is your backstory, bro. Right. Like, no, this is the scenario you were in, and then um, which was kind of which you we worked on the coming up with the scenario together, I believe. Right. I, I mean, in my ago, but it, like in the way that I think about it, it's like I'm I'm doing the same thing. Like when we're actually playing the game, it's the same thing. We're playing through a story very fucking slowly yeah. of this person or these people or whatever the case is, and I don't have any say in what exactly is going to come and jump out at me in the night or whatever right. you know i'm not going to find it's like i'm not going to be able to be the person who gets to be like no no uh that uh, that person from my past isn't going to just show up and it's like no you know, but they might no they, that's exactly they i don't get to choose that so when you go through like a backstory with somebody and doing it as like it like as a a collaborative thing i'm much rather I'd much rather do exactly what I should know, which is my character, play my character, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the world around me will. I, I have to react to the world around me. It's, I, I mean, this right. makes the most sense to me. It's like, hey, if I've said my parents are dead, mm -hmm. that doesn't need to be uh, definitive. I no. mean, in, in a way that, like, hey, they could have died and then they're brought back as fucking. Like you still don't know if your mom's alive. Remnants or, not. or some bullshit believe. like that, you know? I, a revenant. I said remnant. Rev <laughs> Fuck. 
yeah. <laughs> from the ashes. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it, they could be brought back as um, revenants, or or they were uh, vampires, and I didn't know it, or, or a lich. yeah, a lich. Like well. it could be any of that kind of thing. I don't need to. I don't need to know until it's that moment where it's crucial, and and that's part of the good Perfect part example. of storytelling. Strius's character, Strius Arkendrak, the uh, the humanser sorcerer, uh, his part of his backstory was that his father died in battle. But then part of like his personal arc that I brought into him, his father is a lich in the underworld, or not in the underworld in the abyss. In abyss, yeah, and running his own his own. Uh, and he's more of a Plane. demon now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the realm of Androphius, yep. and uh, now it's the whole the whole arc now is literally getting him to. He's trying to separate his father's soul from the demon soul, essentially, and he's got a kind of a kind of a crusade to do it. Right, and he's like he had no idea that that was going to happen. No, and he loves it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like if you don't, then it's like, oh, well, shit. I'm sorry, but uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll 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 move we'll we'll shift this a little bit. And we're like, you want to make it fun for people, but you also want it to be a mystery, man. And, and yeah, at this point, all, all we've been doing in that campaign is just. Uh, like, what are your guys' characters' intentions? What are you guys trying to do? And then that's kind of what I write is, like, what happens on the way to get that done. Right. You know, and that's that's really, that's very character-driven. Almost, it is character-driven. Yeah. Yeah, I, I convoluted by making it, like, really long to get there. Like, well, oh, <laughs> where you trying to go? This is going to be 47 days. It's like, <laughs> between two towns? My friend. <laughs> well, it's like three, just, four I'm days between kidding. towns. But <laughs> no, just kidding. For, to get to the town you want to go to, because, like, well, because, of course, I planted the guy that knows things, right? Right, that's of course. Thing. I planted him so far away that you have to, like, fly on an airship across continents. But that's, you know, yeah, that's I all mean, the story is told. That's the purpose. I, it's, I mean, it, what the fuck story are you going to tell if it's, like, two miles over? Yeah, he's uh, like, oh, shit, just just happens to be. Just back and forth between two towns the whole campaign. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. That'd be lame. I mean, well, it could be good. You could make that good. You, you could try. You could I mean, really, if, you're, well, if you're good. If you flesh those two towns out and to the point where you know all the characters in a lot of those towns, it could be good. Yeah. Like I said, it can. it could be good. But it could also be really bad. I mean, yeah, you got. I mean, like, if you think about it, you could probably play through a whole like modern day campaign in just New York. Yeah, oh, and for sure. you never have to worry about that. Yeah, or like in our you, King's Throne, the whole thing can take place in. Wait, is King's Throne the Game of Thrones one, or is it ours? Not, not our, not yeah. Game of Thrones. Okay, then it's, it's ours. <laughs> <laughs> but over a thousand towns. Yeah, I can't remember half of them. That's fine. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, shit, we talked a lot of, about a lot. Actually, I feel like we just can't, you can we gave everybody a nice insight into who we are and what we're about. You know, we had the premise of talking about Pathfinder 2, and we did. Yeah, Fine, that's not we, wrong. Didn't, we, didn't, we didn't just talk I mean, about that. Though. Hey, I'll, I'll tell you this right now most of, the, <laughs> most of the podcasts that have a premise, they get to that premise two times out of the hour long podcast. That's fair. We've that's... done that more. Probably by five times, I'd guess. Yeah, we did kind of rein ourselves back in every once in a while. Yeah, well, you got it a little bit, you know. Yeah, of course. But, I mean, it is, it is also just like a conversation about tabletop games, you know? Like, right, yeah. The experiences you have are important, like, maybe just to you, but, I mean, they could be informative to other people as well. I mean, yeah. like, a good example is if any of the stuff that we talked about with bad dungeon mastering is something that you're used to, that's not good. No, find a no. new table. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Find a like, new table. Or even kick even just even just conversations about our personal experiences like that can be something that affects somebody else when it comes to like understanding and realizing that the place that you are is not where you should be. Or if some of the things that we've said, which probably won't be the case, because like I said, nobody cares right. about your campaign, which is fine. That's exactly how it is. Unless they're watching it live. Yeah. Or listening to it live. And nobody Nobody wants to hear about something that they weren't there for. Dude, I've rambled on and on to people at our group about, like, parts of the story that they weren't even there. Just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take personal interest. Seriously, yeah, my favorite part, though, of the 5e campaign, which B-dubs I am not a part of anymore, had right. stuff going on. You, you've been in and out as yeah. different people. Yeah. And that's nice. Was the scimitar sodomy. <laughs> oh, God. No, that was... <laughs> it's so weird. This is the only thing I ever ran myself. Yeah, well, there was a part where I scripted and I got permission before... Beforehand? Yeah. I think it was Yeah, me. absolutely. Uh, I was like, well, I'm going to kill off your character, Nate, so that we can... I don't remember why. I it's can't... like, you don't got to worry about it. It'll be fine. It was It was so that you could play as a character and I could DM. Oh, I'll... it was literally so we could do It was that? literally oh, so we could oh, switch that, it. That was perfect then. And then uh, I wrote... actually wrote the script for that episode that you played mm -hmm. just to keep it all in... In, in line with the story, yeah, just and played as a passive character until that that part of the stuff uh, sorted itself out, and then, yeah, and then I, I was just a I was just a sword, yeah. essentially, but I was also your uncle. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> but no, convoluted. Aaron, that was a that's a perfect perfect example of just the crazy, awesome shit. Because like my character dies, has a scripted death, and uh, 
eventually comes back through some uh, crazy convoluted shit that I enjoy. And the point of the night was Lockery. we had to find Ezra's body, and was it a a wanti yanti? Yuanti. What word did you pronounce that? Yep. What that was? Something like that. Yeah. Snake folk. It was a snake man. A snake man. He knew where Ezra's body was. Indeed. I was the only evil character in the party, so I told everybody, you know, you might not want to be here. Which we, which we were, we all knew, but we weren't supposed to know. Which is the funniest <laughs> thing for you to correct all the time. Yeah, I'm like, well, yo, yo, vaguely roguish. And it's like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm a, a scout. scout. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Aaron. I should know. No, that's better. wonderful. So I stuck a scimitar up his ass. I mean, you, yeah, you cut, you ripped the bandit off, but yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was brutal and amazing in like the best like. I'm not fucking around with this way. I really, really wish that we had recorded that because just the whole lead up, I didn't even know where it was. I didn't even know where it was going. Yeah, no, neither did I. Especially because that wasn't supposed to be there. I read that oh, all wrong. Oh yeah, Chris is like, dude, is this dude spiting me? <laughs> like, no, dude, I read it wrong. I, I always and it jumped turned to that. Into, <laughs> it, it it turned into the greatest the greatest fuck up to the whole thing because no, it was wonderful. After that, what it turned into was me then running something that Chris necessarily didn't know about yeah. for a while. He didn't know anything that was going on, so he could be an actual player. Yeah, that was nice. I really wish that I could, uh, I could really put myself together in a DM position more, so that I could, uh, so that you could be the one to uh, yeah. be surprised by some yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm rarely a player, and when I am, I'm new. the DM. No offense to the ones that we've had. No offense to the current one that's also playing. I mean, rather, sure, uh, he's he's fine, but no one's got the level. You know what I mean? Like I don't. No one puts that level of detail in that I right. do. Right, and so you took you take time, man. Lots and lots of time, and that's oh, what yeah. I appreciate. It's the a full time job that I'm not getting paid for. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Well, who never knows? <laughs> I, I honestly, I mean, I would love to be like a professional dungeon master, but what does that even mean? Yeah. Right. How do you even? I don't even. I, I mean, like members are hit me up. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really believe that applies to role playing games. Is the position there? Oh, you like a dominatrix or a dominatrix? Well, if you're going to be a dominatrix, I think there's something you need to share. Right. With the what group. is the male? What is the male uh, equivalent of that? <laughs> Just a man? No. <laughs> no don't, I don't know. Listeners, you can email Nate. No, at... don't, don't, no, don't you dare. Yeah, send him all your dominatrix pictures. No, oh, yeah, don't. He'll love it. Oh wait, that part you can do. Just wait. No, don't. Please <laughs> no, don't. No. Well, send <laughs> him to Aaron. Send no, him to Aaron. No, 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 no. Why not? <laughs> I'm okay. Are you? <laughs> I don't think you are. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Well, I think we've uh, done a good, good bit of rambling as it is. Uh, we've covered a lot of weird stuff. I mean, to be honest, we've gone through barely any of the beginning of the game so far. We'll definitely come back to this when we know more, when we've had more experience. Ultimately, uh, the question is, does Pathfinder 2E meet the rolled standard? Oh, man. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, that so good. far... Fuck yeah, dude. I, I actually... It's a resounding fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good. Like, mechanically, it's so, so good. We have no idea what's going on in the uh, Age of Ashes stuff, which is great for me anyway. I, I like... I refuse to read ahead. Yeah, same. I, I, I can't... Do it. Wait, wait. How can you? Do you have the book? No, but you can look that stuff up pretty oh, easily. Fair. You totally If can. you wanted really to, for sure. To. You, do, yeah, you could just hit up the trove. Like a good example. You just send PDFs. <laughs> yeah, abs- yeah, you can yeah. find stuff. No, you're right. You can find stuff everywhere. And really, this is one of those things like instead of watching somebody play a video game on oh, YouTube also, you and then YouTube playing it, it yeah. it's like it's like trying to stay away from the spoilers of Game of Thrones or whatever, you know, back when that was big. I It's like, I got to. I got to. Stay the fuck away from me. I, I want to know what's going on here. Yeah, and I, I and, enjoy where it goes. And I think that I think that when we come back to it, it I our our opinions on it will either have not changed at all, or it will be we'll, all the better. We'll have a, well, we'll definitely have a more informed opinion. So For now um, it's a very lightly informed one. If this if the question is, does it meet the rolled standard? Yeah, absolutely right. It does. Thus far, a resounding fuck yeah. Oh yeah, resounding fuck yeah, all the way, all around. And that that includes the two people too that also played with us that weren't part of it, this. Um, they they would they would agree, I'm sure. Yeah, well. they've been talking to they they've been talking to me about how great it was. I mean, to be honest though, um, not to suck my own dick about it, but it was mostly because <laughs> they enjoy. <laughs> just loses it. <laughs> it was because of me, okay? It was because I'm a crazy old fucking perverted gnomish man, and I enjoy it. Just give me a. And then I play a gnome in the game too. So, <laughs> no. Butler the other day said that if we were all fantasy characters in real life, I would definitely be a gnome because of generally how I talk. 
I mean, I'm trying to like keep it consistent here mm -hmm. and just how like technical I get about things. <laughs> that he's like, you'd be a gnome. I'm like, well, you look like a dwarf. And then I walked away. <laughs> 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 all right, guys. Well, I think that's uh, it's a pretty good place to wrap it all up, uh, at least for now. Yeah, for sure. We'll definitely come back to this, but before we do, I really think that we should talk about we're we're looking into playing some other stuff. Yeah. Um, Call of Cthulhu, I think, is our next endeavor. Yeah, I um, mean, that's also something that's very familiar to people, and yep. we have not experienced it. Well, yeah, I recently bought the Call of Cthulhu starter set for the current version. I believe it's seventh, if I'm not mistaken. I, Damn, I might be wrong about that. But uh, yeah, our, our our intention is to well within the next week or so, about a week or I think what well, literally next week. Mm -hmm. uh, our plan is to run through that starter set uh, campaign, is which is great because it's for a a keeper and two players, and obviously you know there's three of us here, so. Um, that's going to be wonderful, and then I believe we'll talk about that for you guys next time. Yeah, yeah. sounds good to me. Hopefully we'll stay more on track. And oh, or not. <laughs> yeah, you never know. And as always, stay healthy, don't sniff glue. <laughs>